This video is brought to you by Fulfillright. 84% of Kickstarters ship late. Let that sink in for a minute. As early as 2012, CNN Business was already gathering statistics on how often Kickstarter shipped on time. The answer, even back then, was not many. This was before COVID-19 or the ongoing supply chain crises unfolding right now. Delayed Kickstarters have only become more common since then. Kickstarter backers know this is part of the deal. You back a cool gadget or board game knowing that you'll probably get it three to six months after the target date. It's part of the culture, it's a subject of jokes even. But behind the good-natured humor, there's a question begging to be asked. Why is this so common? Some of it is bad luck, sure, and Kickstarter creators cannot possibly control for every single variable, nor should they be expected to. But a lot of delays, especially prior to 2020, were preventable. In this video, we'll talk about the top three mistakes that Kickstarters make when it comes to fulfillment. With this knowledge, you can reduce the odds that your campaign suffers the same fate. But before we get to that, a quick note. If you need help fulfilling a Kickstarter, look no further. We've worked with hundreds of Kickstarter campaigns and would be happy to help you with yours to go to fulfillright.com slash open to request a quote today. Link in the description. All right, back to the show. 1. Setting unrealistic expectations One of the unfortunate realities of setting up a Kickstarter is that you have to enter an expected delivery date for your rewards. Now it makes sense of course because people shouldn't be turning over their money without any promise of when their rewards might arrive. Still, it requires creators to try and estimate when items will be ready to ship. That's really, really hard. So what's going on here? We know that to set expectations you have to pick an estimated delivery date. Why is it so tough to estimate when rewards will be ready to ship? The simple answer is that the supply chain is complicated. Massively, maddeningly complicated at that. The easiest way to understand it is through examples. Kickstarter is the land of hobby board games, so let's use a game as an example. After a Kickstarter is complete, here's what has to happen. Step 1, the Kickstarter payment has to clear. That takes about two weeks. Step 2, the game must be printed. Prior to COVID-19, this could take six weeks or more depending on the complexity of the game. Step 3, the game had to then be freight shipped to one or more warehouses across the world. Most games are shipped by sea since it's cheaper, even now with all the disruptions we're seeing. Prior to COVID-19, this would take around 6 weeks, plus however much time it took to clear customs, which could be days to weeks in and of itself. And right now, in late 2021, you can pretty much double the printing and freight shipping time. Step 4. The fulfillment warehouses must receive the inventory, and then individually package the items to send in the mail. This could take a day or two all the way up to weeks depending on the time of year when the rewards arrive and whether or not the warehouse is backed up. Step 5. Postal carriers must deliver the inventory to backers, and this could take anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks. Then finally, about 3-5% to of these rewards will be lost or broken and must be shipped out to the backer again, adding a couple more weeks to the process before it is truly complete. So take all these steps together and for a simple board game you're looking at a 4-5 to five month run between the Kickstarter's success and its delivery to backers and this is in the best case scenario prior to COVID-19. So how do you, as a Kickstarter creator, set good expectations? First, get clear estimates for the manufacturing, freight shipping, customs clearance, and order fulfillment timetables. That way you know what things look like for your project in a best case scenario. The more up to date your information, the better. Second, it's simple but important. Pad your timetable by a month or two. Something is almost certain to go slower than expected, so make sure you don't give your backers false hopes that everything will work out perfectly smoothly. It's too complicated for that. Last, Keep an open line of communication with your backers. Even if you do all your research, you might still get unlucky. These things happen. Boats get stuck in canals, goods get impounded by customs, and factory workers call out sick sometimes. If you see a supply chain hiccup coming, own it and tell your backers. The vast majority of backers will appreciate the honesty. Two. Mismanaging freight shipping. Freight shipping is probably the hardest part of the supply chain for Kickstarter creators. Most creators don't have a problem understanding the need for manufacturing and having it done well. What's more, many creators are reading guides online and have picked up the message that it's good to have a company take care of order fulfillment, and you know, hence us being in business. But freight shipping is just hard to understand. It hardly ever makes the news and it's not a flashy subject. But the vast majority of items you have in your household once sailed on a boat from one part of the world to another, or the items 
items themselves contain smaller component parts that went through that journey. So what's so hard about freight shipping? Well first there's finding someone who can take care of it for you. Alone it's nearly impossible to coordinate the delivery of goods from one country or even one town to another. You either must go through a freight broker or a marketplace such as Fredo's. And the marketplaces are almost like brokers in their own right. Let's just go ahead and talk about freight marketplaces since brokers are individuals who take care of the bulk of freight shipping work for you. When you book freight through a marketplace you're confronted with a whole bunch of questions. How heavy is the product? What's its tariff code? Is it hazardous? Do you need a customs bond? Should you ship by sea or air? All these questions will depend heavily upon the nature of your product and you need to figure out the answers before you even launch a campaign as the answers will affect the quotes you receive and the timetables you make from them. Of particular importance will be figuring out how much tax you owe. You'll need to have a special tariff code which will be used to determine how much you need to pay in order to have the goods imported and that depends on what it is you're shipping and where you're shipping it to. Now depending on that code you might also need to comply with safety regulations in order to have your goods imported in the first place too. Using board games as an example here, they have to comply with certain child safety regulations or else they can be stopped at the border. So as if this were not enough, as of 2021 there's a huge line of freight boats just waiting for an open port to drop off their goods. So if you're shipping anytime soon you'll need to factor that in as well. So in summary, if you want to make freight shipping easy, either find a freight broker who you trust or a freight marketplace that you like, get a quote early, figure out your tariff code, figure out if the item is hazardous, look up customs fees and make sure you have the money set aside to pay, and look up all safety regulations and follow them. 3. Fulfilling a large amount of orders alone. All freight shipments have to go somewhere. That somewhere is either going to be a warehouse, or a large business, or your residence. Hopefully it's not the latter, because order fulfillment is pretty complicated. Now one thing to get out of the way here, this video of course is by an order fulfillment company, so we ship other people's orders all day every day. We naturally see our business in a positive light. So let me tell you a story from me as an individual and not as someone doing a company video. In 2016 I made a card game and I launched it on Kickstarter and in December of that year I shipped out about 130 rewards. It took my brother and I an entire Saturday to make it happen. It was a lot of work but we managed. So here's what goes into shipping Kickstarter rewards. You first have to either have the freight shipment delivered to you or you have to go pick up the goods. In my case there was a warehouse 20 minutes away from my apartment and we loaded up two cars full of about 50 boxes of card games. Each of them was pretty heavy. We drove back, unloaded every single heavy box of games and then we proceeded to pack orders and send to about 130 people people. Even using automation to create shipping labels, we still had to pack everything ourselves and make sure the right orders went out to the right people. Now with 130 orders you can get away with this. With 500 even you can get away with this. That's a one weekend job for the most part. But if you're shipping more than that, fulfilling your own orders is a mistake for a couple of reasons. First and most important, if it takes more than a few days to get your orders out the door then you are delaying how quickly rewards will be received. Even if you're able to pack super fast, there's only so much you can take to the post office or so much you can have UPS pick up from your home or office on a given day. There are limits to how much you can do on your own and they are formidable ones. Second, if you ship yourself you save on labor sure, but eventually the postage costs will eat you up and that's not good either. Fulfillment companies get deep discounts on postage rates and packing supplies just because they use so much of both of them and it's often enough to offset the cost of labor. A lot of people even end up saving money when they go through a fulfillment company even though that doesn't sound like it would make any sense at all. This is especially true if you end up doing a lot of international shipping. With enough rewards you can justify sending part of your shipment to a warehouse in the US and part to Europe or to wherever you might need to send the goods. Having someone closer to your backers do the shipping cuts down on postage costs and saves your backers the hassle of being charged customs. So to make a long story short, if you want to avoid delays, consider hiring an order fulfillment company. If you're shipping more than 250 orders or or if a lot of your orders are international, that's a good sign that it's time to hire some help. If you watch this video and you feel like you need help fulfilling your Kickstarter campaign, we'd like to help. Fulfillrite is the most trusted name in order fulfillment. Boost customer satisfaction and scale your business faster with a logistics partner that feels like an extension of your team. Services include same day shipping, real time order and inventory tracking, dedicated customer service and volume based discounts. Go to fulfillrite.com slash open to request a quote today. Link in the description. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to ring the bell too so you can see videos as soon as they drop. And now a parting question for you. Have you ever launched a Kickstarter? If so, how did it go? Let us know in the comments below. We would love to hear from you.